All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have Ryan invests $200 at the end of each year for 15 years into an account that has a semi-annual effective interest rate of 3%. How much does Ryan have after the last $200 is invested? All right, and so the first thing that we wanna notice here is that he is making an investment of $200 at the end of each year for 15 years, right? So we have a period of 15 years where at the end of each of those 15 years, he is making an investment of $200. And so since we have a series of payments over a period of time, that means that we are working with an annuity. And then also notice that we are looking to find how much Ryan has in the account after that last payment or that last investment is made at the end of that 15 year period. And so from that, we know that we are looking at the future value of an annuity. And so we know that the notation for the future value of an annuity is this S and then we have N, our number of periods, and then I, our interest rate for the scenario. And then we would multiply this by some payment X that isn't going to change over the course of that time period, right? We are depositing or investing or paying the same amount every time we do it over the span of those N number of periods. And so in this case, let's write down everything we know for this scenario, and then we'll be able to use this formula for the future value of an annuity. And so we know that X is going to be equal to 200 because Ryan is investing $200 at the end of each year for 15 years. And then we know that our number of periods is 15 years. That's how many payments we're going to be making. Since Ryan is making a payment of $200 at the end of each year, and he's doing it for 15 years, N is going to be equal to 15. He's going to have 15 payments to make. And then we know that the account that he's putting that money into has a semi-annual effective interest rate of 3%. Now that's not a yearly rate. So I'm gonna write J is equal to 0.03, right? That would be 3% in decimal form, but this is not a yearly rate. Notice that this is a semi-annual effective interest rate. And so we cannot use this rate in this notation for the future value of an annuity. We need to get an annual interest rate because we are making payments every year not every semi-annual period, right? Ryan is investing that $200 at the end of each year, and so the period here is one year. And so when we use this notation, we need to make sure that the frequency of N, or our period, is equal to the frequency that our interest rate is compounded for. And so right now, that's not true. We have 15 years, but a semi-annual interest rate. And so we need to convert this interest rate to an annual rate. And so we'll do that first, and then we'll be able to solve for our future value. And so our conversion formula to get I, an annual effective interest rate, is going to be the following. We'll have one plus J to the power of the number of periods that that rate occurs minus one. And so in this case, the number of periods is going to be two because our rate J is a semi-annual rate and there are two semi-annual periods in a year. And so in this case, I is going to be equal to one plus 0 0.03 to the power of two minus one. And if you're to plug this into your calculator, 1.03 squared minus one, your annual effective interest rate would be equal to 0 0.0609. And so now we have an appropriate interest rate that we can use with our future value of an annuity formula, right? This N has to be measured with the same frequency as I, and now that is the case, right? We have a period of 15 years and we have an annual effective interest rate. And so now we know that this is going to be equal to 200 times S, and then our number of periods is 15, or our number of payments, and our interest rate is 0 0.0609. And so then since we know that this notation right here is equal to one plus I to the power of N minus one divided by I, then we can say that this is going to be equal to 200 times one plus 0 0.0609 to the power of n, which is 15 in this case. So we have 15 minus one divided by the interest rate 0 0.0609. And now we have a calculation that we can plug into our calculator and get a result for. So if we plug that in, we will find that the future value is equal to $4,687.23. That is going to be the future value of the series of payments or the series of investments that Ryan is making. Let's look at another example. For our next example, we have Zach deposits $30 per month for 10 years into an account paying 0.5% monthly interest for the first three years and 0.8% monthly interest 
for the last seven years. How much is in Zach's account after the final $30 is deposited? And so here we're dealing with another series of payments, right? Zach is depositing $30 per month for a total of 10 years. And so that's going to be a lot more payments than we have been working with in the past, right? We're now working with a monthly payment rather than a yearly payment. And so we need to keep that in mind when we go to calculate the future value here, because that is what we're looking for, right? We're not looking for a present value. We wanna know how much is in his account after that final payment, which is a payment in the future, right? We wanna know the future value of these payments. And so the tricky part here is that he doesn't have a consistent interest rate, right? He has 0.5% monthly interest for the first three years, and then it changes to 0.8% monthly interest for the last seven years. So that's the trick here. That's what's going to be difficult about this problem, but it's actually not gonna to be too hard to compensate for. So first, let's just write down everything we know here. So we know that Zach's deposits, X, are going to be equal to $30, right? And those are going to be made monthly. And so let's make a note of that. We know that this is a monthly payment. And then we know that he's gonna be making those monthly payments for 10 years, right? So that's not 10 payments of 30, that's 10 years worth of monthly payments of $30. And so how many months are in a year? Well. There's 12, and so if you have 10 years and 12 months in each of those years, right, so we're gonna have 10 times 12, that's gonna be equal to 120 payments. And so he's not making 10 payments of $30, he's making 120 payments of $30. And so in this case, N is going to be equal to 120. That's how many total payments are being made here. And so then finally, let's write down both of our interest rates. We know that for the first three years, our interest rate is 0.5%, and that is monthly. And then for the last seven years out of those 10 years, it's 0.8%. So we have for seven years, it is 0.8%, and that is also monthly. And so now how would we go about this? How are we going to calculate the future value of these series of payments or of this annuity? Well, your first thought is, well, let's write the future value, and that's gonna be equal to 30, our payment, times our annuity notation here, where we have 120 payments, and then we have some interest rate, right? But our interest rate is not consistent for all 120 payments, and so this isn't going to work. We can't use this notation with n being equal to 120. We're gonna have to split this up a little bit. And so what I mean by that is we're going to calculate the future value of the payments made for the first three years and the future value of the payments made for the last seven years because they have two separate interest rates. And so let's try and do that instead. So let's work with the first three years here. We know that we're still making payments of $30. And if we multiply that by this notation, how many payments N are we going to be making in those first three years? Well, if we're making this payment of $30 monthly, how many months are in three years? Well, since there's 12 months in a year, then that would mean that there is 36 months in three years. And so we'll have 36. And then our interest rate is 0.5%, which is equal to 0 0.005 in decimal form. And so this would be the future value of our 30 payments made for the first three years, given this interest rate. And so then we're gonna wanna add this to the future value of our payments made for the last seven years. And so we're also going to have $30 for those payments, right? The amount that Zach is paying or depositing is not changing, it's still $30. The only thing that's changing are our interest rates. And so then we would multiply by S, and then we're gonna have a different amount of payments, right? Because we had 36 for three years of this interest rate, but now we have seven years. So how many payments are in seven years? Well, we're gonna have to multiply 12 months by seven for the seven years that that interest rate takes place for, and you'll get 84. We're gonna have 84 payments of $30 for those last seven years. And then that would be with the interest rate of 0 0.008, which is 0.8% in decimal form. And so now you might be tempted to say, all right, that's it. This is going to be our calculation for the future value in this case but it's actually not, we're missing one thing. You'll notice that I conveniently left this little space here because there's something that we are missing, right? If we wanna find the future value of these payments, these $30 per month payments for 10 years, we can't just find the future value for our payments in the first three years and then not continue to compound it, right? 
that amount is still in the account that Zach is depositing the money into. It's still earning interest. However, when we do this calculation over here, this is independent of this calculation. This is not accumulating any interest for these payments. It's only accumulating the interest regarding the payments in that seven year period. So what we need to do is we need to bring this amount forward seven years. We need to compound this future value for these three years of payments for seven years. And so what we're going to want to do is multiply this amount by one plus an interest rate to the power of the amount of extra periods that it needs to be compounded for. And so remember, for the last seven years, which is how far we need to bring this in the future, right? We no longer have this 0.5% interest rate. So we're not gonna be multiplying this by 1.005 to some power n, right? We're gonna be multiplying instead by 1.008 to some amount of periods. In this case, it's going to be 80 and we'll talk about that in a second. But remember that for the last seven years, which is what we are calculating the interest for here, right? We already have these three years of payments calculated, but we still need to generate that interest for the last seven years, which has a different interest rate of 0.8%. And so that's why this is 1.008. And then we are taking it to the number of periods for those last seven years, right? Which in this case was 80 four monthly periods, right? We have 84 payments with this monthly interest rate. And so we have those 84 months here for this monthly interest rate as well. And this is bringing this value forward seven years. So now we have our future value of our payments in the first three years, and then they are still generating interest here. That's what this means for the last seven years. We are multiplying this by this amount to generate that interest or to take this future value at the end of year three and bringing it to the end of year 10 by compounding it for seven more years. Hopefully that makes sense because now the rest is easy. We have our equation set up. Now all we have to do is use our formula and plug it into our calculator. So this is going to be equal to 30 times 1.005 to the power of 36 minus one divided by 0 0.005 multiplied by 1.008 to the 84th power plus 30 times 1.008 to the 84th power minus one divided by 0 0.008, right? If we use the formula that this notation represents, this is what we would get. We have one plus the interest rate to the power of n minus one divided by the interest rate. And that's the same thing for over here with this term. All right, and so then if you were to plug all of this into your calculator, you would find that the future value is going to be equal to $5,878.06. And that is the final answer to this problem. That is the future value of those $30 payments per month for 10 years, given those two different interest rates. Let's look at one more example. All right, so this next example kind of builds off what we just did in our previous example. But let's read the problem first, and then we'll talk about what I mean. So we have in a series of 30 payments, the first 10 payments are $10 each, the second 10 payments are $20 each, and the final 10 payments are $30 each. The payments are equally spaced, and the interest rate is 5% per payment period. Find the accumulated value at the time of the final payment. All right, so in this case, notice that we are told that we have 30 payments, but they are not all the same value. The first 10 are $10, the second 10 are $20, and the final 10 are $30. So right off the bat, you should see that and know I'm gonna have three separate future value annuity calculations that I need to do. And so what I mean by that is you're going to have one for your first 10 payments, you're gonna have another one for your second 10 payments, and then you'll have a third one for your last 10 payments. And so before we look at what that's going to look like, let's just write down everything else that we know about this problem to kind of keep ourselves organized here. So we know we have 30 payments, right? We have 10 of $10, we have 10 of $20, and we have another 10 of $30. And for that whole time, we have an interest rate I that is equal to 5%. Now we're not told how often that interest rate occurs other than that it occurs per payment period, which directly corresponds to when these payments are made, right? So we're not told if it's annual, semi-annual, it doesn't matter in this case. We're just looking at an interest rate that occurs at the same frequency as our payments. That's what this means, per payment period. And so we're going to use that future value of an annuity formula or notation for each set of these payments with a different amount 
that is being paid. And so if we're going to calculate this, we'll have that the future value is equal to 10, right? That's the amount that we're paying for our first 10 payments. We are paying $10 at the end of each of those first 10 periods multiplied by S where our N is 10 and then we have our interest rate of 0.05. And then we're going to add our second set of payments. So we're gonna have $20 multiplied by S for another 10 periods with an interest rate of 0.05. And then we'll take into account our last set of payments. So we're gonna have plus $30 times S, and then we have another set of 10 payments, right? We're doing those $30 payments 10 times, just like we have 10 $20 payments and 10 $10 payments. And that also has an interest rate of 0.05, right? So these 10 payments are being calculated here. These 10 payments are being calculated here. And these 10 payments are being calculated here. Now, we're not done yet. Our equation is not completely set up because if you notice, just like I did in our last problem, I left a little space here in our equation and that's because we're missing something. We are not done yet. We need to account for something here and that is the fact that these amounts are still going to be generating interest even when we're not making those payments, right? And so what I mean by that is you are making these payments of $10 into your account right? We have 10 of those payments, but after that we switch to $20 payments, but that amount that we put in our account is still going to be generating interest after we stop making $10 payments, right? This represents the future value of those $10 payments after those 10 payments are made, right? This is that future value. It doesn't take into account these two separate sets of payments. So we need to compound this for the amount of time that is remaining while our other payments are being made. And that is another 20 payments, right? This is only 10 of our total of 30 payments. And so we need to compound this. And what I mean by that is multiply it by 1.05, one plus our interest rate to the power of the amount of periods that are left, which in this case is 20. 20 payments, 20 periods. And so if we do that, now this value here is not only the future value of these 10 payments of $10, but it's also the future value after the rest of the payments have been made, right? This brings it 20 payment periods into the future, even though we're no longer making those payments of $10. And so the same thing is going to apply to this amount here, right? This was our second set of 10 payments, but we still have another 10 to make, and so this amount here still needs to be brought forward 10 payment periods. So we're gonna have to multiply this by 1.05, right? One plus our interest rate to the power of 10. All right, so now we have the future value of these 10 payments of $20 at the end of the 10 payment periods that they were made for. And then they're brought forward another 10 payment periods, which is when these other payments are being made, right? So now it's taken all the way to the end because we wanna find the accumulated value at the time of the final payment. And that's also why we don't have to multiply the last 10 payments by any accumulation factor, right? We don't need to do that because we're looking for the accumulated value when this last payment is made. So the moment that last $30 is paid, we don't have to accumulate any more interest because that is then going to be the amount that we are interested in finding. And so then we can finally rewrite our equation here and plug it into our calculator. And so then this will be equal to 10 times 1.05 to the 10th power minus one divided by 0 0.05 times 1.05 to the 20th power plus 20 times 1.05 to the power of 10 minus one divided by 0 0.05 times 1.05 to the power of 10 plus 30 times 1.05 to the power of 10 minus one divided by 0 0.05. And so then if we were to plug this into our calculator, this would be equal to $1,120.83. And so this would be the future value of those 30 payments made in this scenario. And so those are all the examples I had for this example video. Hopefully you have a better idea of how to use the future value of annuities formula. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.